All right, we are only four minutes late. Uh, whoever has a lot to do with uh, Florian knows we are actually really great. We are like really great in time. <laughs> um, the topic is uh, venture debt, and I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful that Florian and Oscar are actually taking the time to tell us a little bit more about that. I think the first time that a lot of that, that I heard about that and that a lot of companies also in our portfolio like heard about that was like three years ago also at back then it was called portfolio days now mm -hmm. it's uh, now it's the knowledge conference and was introduced and actually not too many knew about that it seems like in the startup world most people have two ways in mind either uh, you bootstrap and you just like try hard to finance everything out of your own pocket, maybe a little bit from mom and dad, but that's basically it. Mm -hmm. And there are the others uh, who go after VCs and say, please invest here. And it seems like there is another source of money that uh, we all know from our private life, right? There are <laughs> banks. No, they, no, give no, you hey, hey, hey. <laughs> they give you money uh, no. if, if you need some urgently and you can go into debt. seems like this is also that can also make sense sometimes. Uh, for startups yeah. Yeah. and um, yeah I think uh, the two of you have some interesting things to say about that so thanks a lot yeah we try at least to have some interesting things to say so thanks Oscar for Good. being here uh, Oscar is a veteran in that industry yeah uh, what you do you mean veteran veteran <laughs> uh, in, 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 in a positive sense <laughs> veteran in a positive sense you've been with Silicon Valley Bank for how long yeah, 18 years yeah, yeah. And in technology financing pretty much all of my career. Okay, yeah, yeah. and that's quite long. <laughs> yeah, it's quite long. Yeah, um, and Silicon Valley Bank is, one can say that, the p pioneer in, in venture yes. debt providing, yes. and yes. Uh, you've yeah. moved well beyond that. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously, you were founded Silicon yeah. Valley, yeah. hence the name, but you're now active in uh, basically not completely globally, but very internationally, yeah, right? Very can, you, can you just talk a little bit about Silicon Valley Bank and tell people what it is, and then we'll dive into, yeah. uh, and what your role yeah. is also, and then we'll dive yeah. into venture debt and, and, yeah. and the technicalities. No, terrific. So uh, we're in our 38th year, headquartered obviously in Silicon Valley, publicly traded on NASDAQ, and, um, uh, and we started the bank because originally, back in the early 80s, none of the big American banks wanted to bank these early stage companies that were, that were appearing in Silicon Valley because they didn't know what they did. They grew slowly. At, uh, and but, but banking means like opening an account. Oh, opening account, exactly. We're opening not account. talking about lending. No, opening uh, account. Uh, yeah. and, and so uh, <laughs> a group of sort of entrepreneurial bankers got together and said, listen, we've got to form a bank. To open up to open up accounts for all of these early stage companies which are popping up like Cisco Systems and people yeah. like that, and that was the genesis of how Silicon Valley Bank came together, and so we started opening up accounts for all of these small technology startup companies in Silicon Valley uh, in the early 80s, and we started opening up accounts for the other phenomena that was growing in Silicon Valley at the time, uh, that was venture capital, mm -hmm. you know, on fund one or fund two. Mm -hmm. And over our 38-year history, we've really grown with the venture capital and uh, innovation technology world. Mm -hmm. uh, we only bank technology and innovation companies, hardware, software services, etc. And we banked them from early stage right through to global companies because many of our early stage companies became global companies. And then about 12 years ago, we said, look, uh, innovation, venture capital is becoming a global market, obviously. Mm -hmm. So we began to expand globally. So we opened up originally in the UK, where we now have almost 300 people, full mm -hmm. service bank. Mm -hmm. We opened up in Israel. You have to be, if you're a technology bank, you've got to be in Israel. Uh, we started a joint venture bank in China, where we have over 200 people uh, mm. in a 50-50 joint venture. Uh, because you have to, right? I mean, if you want to open a bank in China, you have probably not just do that. But yes. Okay. But the interesting thing, uh, for is they, the Chinese authorities allowed us to do a 50-50 ownership, so we okay. are, which is unusual. It's usually 51-49, oh. and you know oh. who owns the 51. Yeah. But, uh, you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then last year, uh, we opened up in Germany. We'd been looking at Germany for a long time, nothing to do with Brexit, but we'd been seeing what was happening with fundraising, with the venture capital industry, with new company formation. And so we said, this is the time to come to Germany. So we opened up in Germany, um, based, uh, headquartered in Frankfurt, spent a lot of time in Berlin and Munich, because here in Germany, we bank both early stage companies. We do a lot of leverage buyout financings with our private equity firms. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of lending to venture capital and private equity firms. We do short term bridge financings for them between calling capital calls. And we also deal with very large companies as well. So mm -hmm. we said, you know, so we really think of us as banking technology companies 
up and down the whole food stack, mm -hmm. but many, of, many people remember us, the banking early stage companies. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things you're probably best known for is, is venture debt. Yep. And um, I mean, that has been uh, going on in, in Silicon Valley for yep. several decades yep. already. Um, there has been like some insecurity here also in the market. Yep. What, what, what companies it's good for? They have been said, if you take venture yep. debt, that can be the nail on the coffin uh, if, if things don't go well. Can you talk a little yep. bit about yep. what, what yep. are the type of companies yep. you would recommend yep. taking venture yep. debt um, for? And, and let me just d describe how we originally created yep. venture debt. Because the founders of Silicon Valley re recognized, so the Silicon Valley Bank, recognized a very, very interesting phenomena, which we all know is now proven. But they realized that if you align yourself with top-tier venture capital firms at that time in the valley, we realized two things. One, they did deep due diligence when they invested in a company. And when they were investing in a startup company, they were investing for the long term. There mm -hmm. was going to be a series A financing mm -hmm. and a series B financing, and most likely a series C financing mm -hmm. along the way. So we realized that uh, a company backed by top-tier VCs in the Valley would have an economic life of at least 36 to 48 months, irrespective of whether it was going to be a huge success. Mm -hmm. And so ironically mm -hmm. and counterintuitively, what we recognized was that the least risky time to lend to a startup company is in fact exactly at the beginning mm -hmm. when it raises its first Series A from mm -hmm. Project A or any mm -hmm. of the other institutional investors. And that's how venture debt started. And of course, you can see how a lot of people would say, how can you lend to this company? It's got no revenues, it's losing money, it's going to run out of cash, but it's been backed by Sequoia Capital, Kleiner Perkins, mm -hmm. NEA, uh, Project A, Holt Spring, yeah, Atomico. That's a good lineup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think you have to change the order <laughs> a little bit, but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you can see the logic. Uh, yeah. And that's really how yeah. we built our business. Yeah. And that's how venture debt then was created. Mm -hmm. And for many, many years, and we, still, and we still provide venture debt, but then as the companies grow, mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our lines of credit grow and they become working capital or SaaS lines mm -hmm. or CAC lines, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But that was really the genesis. And, the, and, and that's why we, d we developed such strong relationships with the venture capital community because we have to understand what Florian, Thies, Ben, Uwe are thinking about when they invest in a company, what, you, what the KPIs are, what you're looking for, because we know that those companies are going to run out of cash. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we need to know what they need to achieve in their KPIs mm -hmm. for you and your other investors to feel comfortable to put yeah. in a Series B or a Series C. So one learning, I guess, for, for the entrepreneurs is if, if you are thinking about raising venture debt, yep. and we'll come to, yep. to that in a minute, it, it makes sense to lo also look at your equity investor base yes. because your likelihood of raising venture debt at, at good conditions and to a certain extent and, and yep. with a higher degree of certainty also depends on the equity investors that you have. So they're yep. closely interlinked and I think that's a, that's that's a, key, a, point very, yep. that's a key point. Th that's a key point because we know that institutional investors, this is your focus. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of people have said to us, oh, you know, we're backed by fam family offices uh, and angels, etc. And that's great. But our key requirement and confidence is to know that Florian and Project A will continue to invest in the company. Yes, mm -hmm. they'll go up and down, but and, and so that's what you have to At least right. for 48 months. At least for 48 months, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe longer. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe longer, but, but, you, but, but you at least have yeah. that time yeah. frame because yeah. Yeah. until you, you've really structurally fucked it up completely, yeah. they yeah, at yeah. least give you 36 to 48 months. Yes, and, and as yeah. we've talked about, and venture debt amortizes over that period. Yeah. So that essentially would get our exposure down to a very small amount. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think are the, like the key three, four characteristics a company should have? if they want to sensibly get venture debt. I mean, what, what do you, I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. there should be a, a, a good investor in that, yeah. that we understood yeah. that. Wh what stage, what kind of business model yeah. is, should there be like stable revenue coming in already? What, what other characteristics yeah. do you see? Yeah. So, so we will provide venture debt to a company that really has been recently formed. It may not even have any revenues. Now, let me just explain. They may not have any revenues, but it may have raised significant venture capital money from institutional investors. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and the, the key thing for, that we say to entrepreneurs is, and this is the old saying about all banks, go and ask for a bank loan when you don't need it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we say to entrepreneurs, look, when you've raised a Series A, 
from Project A, 10 million euros with Project A and some other investors. Uh, we w they come to us because we would typically, there's no, there's no fixed formula, but uh, Dami, what would we do about, what, 30%? Around one third. Yeah. So, so if, if an entrepreneur came to us and said, I've raised 10, mi 10 million euros from Project A, we would typically lend around 3 million so uh, uh, in debt. So we're essentially converting that 10 million into 13 million mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by way of debt, which then obviously uh, extends the entrepreneur's runway, allows him or her to grow the business faster. Mm -hmm. And as we'll talk a little bit about how we price that, it's, it's a much, much less dilutive mm -hmm. form of capital. Mm -hmm. So the message, you know, to answer your question, but if as an entrepreneur, come and see us early or when you're about, when you're planning to close around, because instead of raising 10, you can raise 13. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the so key thing is coming independent of an equity round to you is possible, yeah. but the likelihood is lower than if you are just doing an equity round and then you add a venture debt component yeah. to it. Is that fair to yeah. say? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the company would have had to close. We talked to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs who are saying, look, I'm talking to X, Y, and uh, Z, you know, uh, we think we're going to be closing around sometime in November, December, mm -hmm. and we start beginning to talk to them about venture debt. But we will only put that venture debt in once the company has closed the equity okay. round. Okay, understood. Yeah. So, so the key element for you is really, or the key element for the entrepreneur is really to say, okay, the cost of capital might be lower. Yes. Th that's one thing. Or the implicit yep. explicit cost of yep. capital and the dilutive that effect, yes, obviously. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a yep. key element, right? Yep. So if you want to avoid dilution. Yes. That's the thing. Um, obviously, but uh, on the other hand, if you look at the, the venture debt rounds combined with an equity round, you guys sit on top of the liquidity waterfall, right? We do, we do. We so do. that's also important to understand. So first money out yep. goes to yep. these guys. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and to that point, so this is typically how we structure venture debt. So mm -hmm. we would say, fine, we're going to give you a loan. Um, it's, you know, and I'll be, I'll be totally transparent because it, 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 this is a marketplace. The loan interest rate is anywhere from 7 to 11%, depending on the risk factor, et cetera. Mm -hmm. it's, we typically uh, give a company, you know, uh, six months interest only, mm -hmm. and then we amortize it on a straight line basis over 36 months. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, and then, uh, but we ask, uh, there's no real covenants. The only real covenant for us is liquidity. You know, mm -hmm. when do you run out of cash? Mm -hmm. And when is Project A going to put some more money in? Mm -hmm. And what do you need to achieve between now and then mm -hmm. to, uh, to raise the next round of financing? And then we ask for warrants, which is like options, into the equity of a company. Mm -hmm. But by and large, uh, this is uh, true for in our European operations. Uh, the total amount of warrants that we ask for usually equate to about 0.5 to 0.7% mm -hmm. of the fully diluted shares of a company. Mm -hmm. So suddenly for an entrepreneur, they can extend their runway by additional 3 million or 4 million euros. Mm -hmm. Yes, pay 8%, 9% interest rate. Mm -hmm. You've got to pay the loan back, mm -hmm. but it only, I it costs you less than 1% mm -hmm. dilution. Mm -hmm. And that's what then, and, and we do various calculations. But the, the dilution comes on top, though, so the warrant, and that's important to understand, comes on top of, of the interest rate. Of the interest. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly so. Yeah. And, and we take collateral, mm -hmm. because we're a bank, we take collateral into the assets of a company. But for an early stage company, you don't have any assets. This is the collateral. It's a table <laughs> and a laptop. So it's not going to pay us out of our yeah. loan. Yeah, three million uh, is kind of difficult with laptops. Yeah, uh, yeah. exactly. But that, uh, and that's mm -hmm. why we're very dependent upon our VC friends to continue. And look, nothing ever goes to plan, mm -hmm. but, but, but that's why it's very important to only do venture debt with investors who we know, we have confidence in, uh, and we trust, et cetera. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think that's a, that's a key learning. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, venture debt can be prolonging the, um, uh, the life or the, the, the time until you raise your next financing round. Yeah. That can be w one motivation, you yes. avoid dilution. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would at least say it helps at least, it helps at least if you have a functioning business model. Yeah. That's at least our yeah. experience. I don't know what you yeah. would, would say. I mean, obviously you, you, uh, you've prolonged your runway, but, yeah. um, um, uh, you know, even af after th 36 months, if you, uh, I mean, that's at least what we like to do yes. yeah. best. If, if you basically say yeah. there's a series A, I mean, by series A, you should have found a business model yeah. and then uh, ideally, and, and, uh, and then you prolong the runway and can grow on yeah. the functioning business yeah. model. Yeah. That's at least uh, the constellation. Yeah. You're absolutely right. You're yeah. ab but, but in the U.S., remember, we've banked 
uh, many entrepreneurs who are on their second or third or fourth startup yeah. company with us, they've had great success in the past. Yeah. They can go and raise money on Sand Hill Road relatively easily, yeah. and they come to us with a very, you know, it, it's with very little revenue, if none. Yeah. We will lend to those ki those entrepreneurs based on their track record and mm -hmm. the investor base. But you're absolutely right, Fl Florian. We all like to see some traction, just like because you're 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 really going to ideally invest into companies that have got a have begun to prove mm -hmm. their model mm -hmm. and where your capital will help them accelerate and scale. Yeah. And so most of our clients have that same type of profile mm -hmm. where they're early stage in, in, in still losing money, yeah. still needing cash, uh, but, they, but their model is beginning to, to, to prove itself. Yeah. What, what's, what's probably also an interesting aspect here because sometimes it's mixed up. Um, there's a difference between venture debt, we yeah. just described yeah. it, and working capital financing, yes, yes, which yes, you guys yes. also do. And yes. I think uh, that is an, uh, interesting to understand, I think, what, what the both. Can you describe a little bit what yep. a typical working capital financing yep. use case is? Yep. And are we talking about the same conditions, warrants, mm. and these mm. kind of things? Mm. Mm. Or are you offering this at 4% with Mario Draghi pumping? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so the ideal situation for us is exactly that. We start with venture debt, and then as the company grows and starts creating more revenues, we can then convert, and uh, this is, and I'll get back to this, we can convert part of our venture debt into a working capital line, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the working capital lines, uh, we have different types of credit facilities for different types of companies. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're selling you know, a straight you know, product or straight license, you've got receivables, we'll finance for receivables, typical banking. But today, many of our companies, many of your companies, have got a subscription revenue model. Mm -hmm. So we've devised uh, lending products which lend on a multiple of a company's monthly or annual recurring revenue. So that gives them, that's the borrowing base. Mm -hmm. um, we have lines of credit, for example, for many of our consumer-facing companies mm -hmm. who, let's say, have a very proven CAC to lifetime value mm -hmm. uh, 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 metric and can come to us and say, listen, for every you know, euro we invest, we know we're going to create three euros in revenues. Mm -hmm. So we, in those situations, we will actually lend part of that company's marketing budget because mm -hmm. they've got a metric for every money. You know. mm -hmm. so, so we've got, so, as you, so to your point, venture debt starts at the base, but then as the company grows, depending on their sector and mm -hmm. their stage, we bring in different types of products, you know, right up to acquisition financings, et cetera. And ide our ideal company, mm -hmm. and thank goodness we have many of them, we started, you know, very early Series A, and now they're a publicly traded company, and mm -hmm. they've got a syndicated line of credit, and we're the agent bank and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're still part of that as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, abso absolutely. We st we stay throughout the whole life of the company. Yeah. And you know, on the working capital facility, you're right. Uh, we're still we're st it's still bank debt, so we're still collateralized by the assets. But then the risk is less. Mm -hmm because the company's got revenues, it's got receivables, et cetera. And so as a result of that, the pricing is less. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we love to try and ask for warrants, but, but as a company matures, that becomes less relevant because obviously the company will say, I've got an uh, existing base of business here. Mm -hmm. but, it's, uh, but, but that's exactly how it, how it develops. And, and this is the one thing. Look, there's, an, there's uh, uh, quite a few venture debt players out in the marketplace, uh, all good guys. We, we work with them, we compete with them, et cetera. But the one thing that you have to remember, that when one takes venture debt from a venture debt fund, and they're all good guys, they are a fund, they're mm -hmm. not a bank. There's mm -hmm. advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. Because they're a fund, they have to make sure that they get all of their money back. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges which we've seen over the years is that portfolio companies can grow so quickly. Uh, so, you know, you take venture debt in 2019, mm -hmm. but by early 2021, you've got revenues of 10 million and growing, et cetera. And if you want to prepay your venture debt at that stage, with a venture debt fund, you have to prepay everything. Mm -hmm. with, with, with a bank, we can, we, we can change that into a working capital line. Mm -hmm. So, it's, so uh, venture debt is a great piece of capital when used at the right time and not, and not overused. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're going with a venture debt fund, you have to be careful because if you ever want to prepay that, mm -hmm. it's going to be very expensive. Okay, understood. So yeah. one criterion to select the right kind of partner is, yeah. is it a bank or a fund? Yeah. yeah. And I think you're the only bank. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. What are, 
other criterion uh, uh, criteria to, to consider when selecting the right partner? I mean, obviously interest rate, obviously things like what kind of collateral do they want? What, what else do you see how to make an educated decision on who's the right partner for you at, the, at that time? Can you, can you shed some light on any yep. other dimensions you would look yep. at if you are a founder? Uh, nothing ever goes to plan. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, whoever you work with, you as must be talking about other companies, our company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. For other investors, their business nothing, plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not us. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but the criteria is exactly the same in choosing an investor, mm -hmm. choosing a financing partner. You have to choose somebody who, who understands, you know, that the industry goes like this. Now, so long, you know, mm -hmm. but, but you have to be prepared for the for the downturns because yeah. there are downturns yeah. uh, you know, miss product development uh, something here whatever and so you've got to choose partners who aren't going to panic aren't going to overreact aren't going to say oh sh what's happening here mm -hmm. and believe me we've at silicon valley bank we have literally yeah. banked tens of thousands of technology companies and we've been through every machination of, of, of problems mm -hmm. the key thing is not to panic the, mm -hmm. uh, because if something goes wrong with 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 a company and inevitably does we work very closely with the investors you know because mm -hmm. then you know the company's got a problem the investors have got a problem we've got a problem we've got to sit down and say okay it's going to take longer to develop a company it's, it's, going, to make, it's going to take more cash than, mm -hmm. than, than, than we thought possible how can you help us etc so you've got to find partners who are experienced in the trials and tribulations yeah. of startups. That's very important. I, I can also sec uh, second that in, in, in the sense that I would always, before I take venture debt from somebody, always talk to other companies that have received yes. venture yes. debt from yes. the same yep. company, from the same partner, because we've also, I don't want to you know, talk about specific names, but it, as, as you said, I mean, in the startup situation, often things don't go right or go wrong and and um, I, I, that actually also goes for equity partners i mean yeah. if you have equity investors that panic in situations that's also not very helpful the problem with venture debt providers panicking is it's even more detrimental than equity investors because equity investors cannot get out yeah uh, i mean yeah. we are stuck with you guys uh, for for better and for worse and and um, uh, venture debt investors yes. have the means yes. to yeah. also pull the trigger on yeah. companies if, yeah. if, if they need to um, yeah. and and I think that's the important difference why why I would argue you know not optimal equity investors also not great yeah. a suboptimal venture debt invider yeah. uh, venture debt provider can be even more yes. uh, yeah. harmful yeah. Um, I don't know whether you but would that's agree to that that's when the relationship between the provider, the venture debt provider, and, and the equity investor, and the company is very important mm -hmm. to understand where we are in that process, what needs to be done, how you've got to be patient, etc. Because you're right, uh, a lender can pull their money, and, and, and that's something which, you know, is for us that's like a nuclear bomb. You, d mm -hmm. you don't press that button yeah. unless uh, you know until the investors have said, "Look, this is a lost cause. Here are the keys. Yeah. We're abandoning the company." No. I mean, one one interesting consolation, if I if I may add. Uh, here is, um, and we've, we've had that a couple of times. I mean, sometimes an acqui hire type sale is the only thing that you can do. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, and in the US, an acqui hire is like 10, 15 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An acqui hire in Germany is like 500,000 or so. And, and if you have yeah. venture debt or two and a half million yeah. or whatever it is, often the route to yeah. kind of a, uh, this yeah. kind of exit is yes. closed yes. unless you have somebody that, yes. that um, is, uh, is allowing this because yeah. uh, nobody's going to pay three million yes. for this company. Yeah. And then you're really stuck. So, um, and that's what I yeah. would always watch out for. It, it reminds me, Florian, one thing you've got to be careful in taking venture debt, you can't take too much. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, a lot of companies, you know, they're very aggressive, they want to grow, they've got great investors, they say, no, 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 we want to borrow six, not three, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. And we always say to them, look, you've got to be careful because if you take too much debt as an early stage company, then when you're raising your Series B and you're bringing in new investors, a new investor is going to say, look, I'm going to put money into your company to develop. I'm not putting money in to pay off mm -hmm. the debt. So you've got to be very careful to put in the right amount of debt that doesn't sort of tip the balance mm -hmm. and then cause an impediment or a problem for the company to raise another round and bring new investors in because they've raised too much debt, which yeah. has to be amortized and paid back. Yeah, because as, a, as an equity investor, you would always be behind you guys. Yes. Yeah, otherwise, yeah, 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 yeah. they will not yeah. agree. So that's also a very important thing to understand. If you raise the next round and you've raised venture debt before, yeah. the venture debt guys will obviously not agree to any new round happening uh, unless they stay on top of the liquidity yeah, 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 fund, which yeah, yeah, is yeah. completely yeah. fair, but it's just you need to understand that uh, because it can yeah. have yeah. implications, yeah. especially if you have like 50 million in debt or so. Yeah. Yeah, so but so it shows. 
Um, wh do you see any significant difference in like how Silicon Valley founders use venture debt and how German founders or European founders are using it right now? Is it, is it used more in the US? Is it used less? Is it used smarter? Always think you're smarter than well, we I'll are. I'll, are let my really I'll let my colleague Dan answer that. Dan is on rotation from our New York office yeah. and does a lot of the New York consumer deals and fintech deals. So d do US, uh, <laughs> do US uh, entrepreneurs use venture debt differently than us? Has Dan been prepared for that question? No. Let's see. Okay. I've seen in my, well, two and a half weeks in the German market so far. <laughs> All right. <coughs> He's <Okay>. a veteran. <laughs> uh, in the U.S., um, founders, y you guys, you said that it's, you know, it can be tipped more or swayed more towards the lender because we have the collateral. Mm -hmm. I find that founders in the U.S. just kind of know that SVB will be patient. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not maybe the case for all types of, of lenders, so that's one thing. Also, in the U.S., folks are okay with taking venture debt pre-revenue. Mm -hmm. On the fintech team, for example, you have to raise a lot of money to get, the, to get licensed and registered, et cetera, across many different states, so that can cost a lot of money, and a debt is obviously less dilutive than equity. Mm -hmm. So I'd say maybe a little more open to having debt on the books just because SVB has been in the market in the U.S. Yeah. since 1983. Um, those are some of the key things that I've seen. But again, that's three weeks. So yeah. 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 Anything to add, Oscar? Like any more differences that you would w would see? or? Well, th there's less education about that. Ah, we've got a question. We're excellent. Sorry, sorry. Uh, th there's less knowledge of venture debt yeah. in Europe, and that's where we, in, you know, got to educate the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah, you said that um, that the bank will always be first in the ne next financing round. So my question would be, how do investors look at the whole thing venture debt in America compared to Germany or Europe? <laughs> <laughs> in the liquidity, so in the liquidity waterfall, you'll stay on top. Yes, but. It's very rare that SVB would hit the pause button on a financing, uh, and I don't think we'd even think about using those rights. It's such a relationship-based bank. Yes. That I think that, uh, but I, I don't know the scenario you're, you're thinking through. But you know, we don't really get consent all the time to a, a new round coming in. More likely than not, if we like the business and the opportunity, we'll refinance the venture debt into a larger facility or a working capital line or a recurring yeah. revenue line. Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah, uh, the I bank remains well, f first, you know, first. Okay, I mean, it's it's normal that a bank will always, whatever bank it is, will will stay on top. Yes, I mean, yeah, that yeah. that, and and. Um, but we won't uh, get our money back. Uh, we won't get our money back from the commercial of the uh, company. Uh, yeah. But but it really depends on the, uh, uh, the, like my experience is, if you have an experienced lender, that you know is interested in a long term relationship, also with the investor that you have on board, that's not really a problem. Then it's not a problem, but it's that's why I would say I would always talk before you take money because there's always some new players in the market, which is per se good. Yeah, I mean competition is good and, and it drives down prices, but you always have to understand who's the people that are like you know. I think if you have a former venture capitalist doing venture debt, I think that that can be a good thing because I mean they obviously know these kind of risks, and um, so that's um, that then that's okay. Mm. I think if you take money from whoever because they think, oh, it's great to get seven yeah. percent instead of um, negative oh, interest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then then uh, and that's the main motivation. Then it's probably not a good constellation. But we we I mean we work also with with venture debt in a lot of companies. Oh, not we, but the companies do work with it, and we uh, agree to that this is a good idea uh, under certain constellations, and and we accept this kind of liquidity waterfall kind of situation. But where we see companies that we think are endangered of becoming more uh, an acqui-hire type constellation, we would not advise it. Yeah, But you obviously never know. Yeah, I mean, there's some acqui-hire type constellations where you hope they will, after three, four, five years, finally rise to greatness. And, and they never do, and then you're basically uh, you don't have the option of the of the of the fire sale with like some liquidity coming back. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean we are a hit driven business, yeah. So if we fail, it doesn't really matter whether we fail by 0.2 or factor 0.2 or we fail completely, yeah. So it it, it, it doesn't really matter. So I think as long as we see the chance that something will um, uh, somehow materialize to to s at least close to a hit business, we would always support this kind of way. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Um, okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for this. I mean, we have uh, ten more minutes, so I wanted to um, touch 
touch on one uh, uh, one more area if 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 that's possible um, and um, can you uh, like probably w what I found interesting uh, like also venture debt as an as an asset class per mm. se yeah. and uh, I mean it's probably not so interesting to everybody here in the room because it's quite specific but I think it's still important to understand it I mean how is venture debt as an asset class yeah. How has it performed vis-a-vis yeah. -vis VC in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and because I yeah. think it's important yeah. to understand that. It, it, it's a great question. And, and venture debt is becoming a, a more popular and more discovered asset class because people are realizing it's quite valuable. Because mm -hmm. uh, unlike you, Florian, when you invest in a company, obviously you've got potentially very, very high returns, mm -hmm. very high IRR. But you've also got high risk because if a company doesn't pan out, mm -hmm. you're going to lose. You, you know, you, you, you're going to lose your, your your equity investment. For a venture debt provider, and this has happened to us over the years. So we go and lend money early early on in a Series A, and the company goes on to raise a Series B and C, and our loan amortizes over the over the years and gets to a de minimis amount. But the company is not successful. And and the VC comes to us and says, look, the company, you know, it's not going to make it. We're going to try and do an aqua hire, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, uh, we're going to try and do a distressed sale. And of course, for the venture debt player, so long as they haven't overlent, their their debt has now reduced to a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. And because the venture debt player has a first lien on the assets, mm -hmm. which sometimes also can be intellectual property if there's something, but then when that company gets sold, mm -hmm. the money has to come through the venture debt player because mm -hmm. the venture debt player has a collateral interest mm -hmm. in all of the assets. So historically, uh, what's happened sometimes for us and for other venture debt players, that in a situation where a company has not been successful, a venture debt player could actually get all of its money back mm -hmm. and the investor loses everything. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's why it's now become a, a more attractive asset class because it's also, you're also saying, wow, you've got some downside, you've got downside protection because mm -hmm. you've got this collateral, mm -hmm. you've got upside opportunity because of your warrants, mm -hmm. and you're getting a current coupon of seven, eight, nine percent. Mm -hmm. So a lot of LPs are now also beginning to look at venture debt saying, you know what, that could be, you know, we get a current coupon, mm -hmm. there's some downside protection, you know, and if we choose the right partners, we could get some upside. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's very uh, also important to understand because in a venture capital fund, I mean, it can take sometimes six, seven, eight yeah. years until you get back any money. Yeah. Yeah? And, yeah. and so it's, it's quite interesting to, yeah. to, to see that as well, that uh, venture debt. Uh, but why, if that's so attractive, why aren't more traditional banks doing venture debt? Well, look, and, and, and this is uh, a comment about all banks. Now, in the U.S., we're seeing much more competition from the, from the, from the bigger banks because they all realize the innovation sector is... Mm -hmm is important. Look, uh, traditional banks have been brought up lending against hard assets, mm -hmm. property, mm -hmm. furniture, equipment, etc. Uh, 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 you know, uh, and so that mentality is very much ingrained. If you come to them and say, hey, we want you to lend against this company, there's, no, there's, only, there's only tables and chairs and laptops, mm -hmm. and can you give them three or four million euros? Oh, and by the way, they're going to run out of cash in March. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's very difficult for a traditional bank, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and even those banks, and, and, you know, and, and, and the German banks and the British banks, they're all getting more into this technology lending, which they need to, because the, uh, the ecosystem needs more access to capital. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult for a Deutsche Bank or a Barclays, etc., mm -hmm. to do a three or four million loan mm -hmm. to a loss-making company mm -hmm. that's going out of cash. You know, it's 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 first of all the cost structure doesn't allow it, mm -hmm. and it's just m m you know the mentality. All of the credit, all of our credit partners at Silicon Valley, we've got about 27 credit partners in the bank. They are all lenders at Silicon Valley Bank. Mm -hmm. So so it's like we're not dealing with credit people who go, uh, uh, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. We're all dealing with colleagues, guys and gals who've been in the industry like me, 18, 20 years, mm -hmm. and know how technology works. And that's a huge advantage as well, because mm -hmm. then you don't get some suddenly changes, you know, if you go with a, a, a and ba all banks are great, but you've got to be careful. If you go with somebody who's entering this market for the first time, you've got to be very careful that in 12 or 15 months' time, there's not a change in management or a change in credit officer who says, Jesus, what are we doing with these mm. loans? Mm. And suddenly it's, oh my God, we've got to pull back, etc. So you, that's, and that's how we sometimes sell, you know, Silicon Valley Bank, but you're dealing with a bank that is no, 
but is committed to this industry 100%. That's mm -hmm. all that we do. Mm -hmm. And we know, we know all the ups and downs and mm -hmm. the issues. Mm -hmm. you know? Cool. Rainer just indicated to me that we have four, five minutes left. So I wanted to open up the floor to questions from the audience. And I guess we have some. If not, I have some more questions. But it looks like we have plenty of questions. Do uh, most of these get structured nowadays with deferred drawdown provisions? And if so, what's the cost structures surrounding that? Now, when you mean deferred drawdown provisions? So in terms of actually drawing the capital, I don't need to draw it for 10 months. Yeah, yeah. so, so y y y we can structure venture debt in different ways. You know, you can tranche it sometimes. So you say, look, um, uh, we'll give you uh, a 4 million venture debt. You can have two out of uh, two immediately and the other two once you reach some sort of a benchmark, et cetera. So there's various ways, we can give them, we, you know, we give it all in one go, we can tranche it. There's various ways, going back to your point, mm -hmm. if a company is evolving and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, uh, uh, and growing its revenue, uh, if they hit a certain milestone, then in our eyes, the risk falls, and so we can lend them more money. So it, there are various diverse. What about the other way around, though? I mean, you're taking eight, ten million dollars of a Series A, and yes. now you're going to draw two to three of venture debt. What if you don't actually want to draw and pay the cost structure on that debt? Oh, yeah. there, there's the a deferred drawdown provision. There's a deferred, of, yeah. deferred drawdown period of, of six to nine months. Is that is that exactly so? Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't need to borrow it all the, yeah, entirely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, my question um, targeted at Florian. Okay. How do you how do you think about a company who has taken thirteen million in a Series A versus mm -hmm. a company who has taken ten million in a Series A and three mil of uh, venture debt? Yeah, how do you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how do I? Um, I think per se it wouldn't make a big difference to me, to be honest. I think if if they have a business model that they can pre-finance with this, like for example, uh, Home Day is a good example. Yeah, Home Day, you know, they acquire mm. leads, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. they materialize those leads materialize five to six months later. If they do a venture debt component in a round where they have a business model where they s where, where they can finance it, pre-finance it at cheaper capital cost, I think I, I would consider the founder smart. Um, yes, and. I think if you don't see that clear case, I, I always look at this clear case mm. because I know mm. if they, they, they don't have this clear case, if I don't want to screw up my relationship to Silicon Valley Bank or somebody else, I need to jump in yeah, uh, as, as a um, as a private as, as a equity investor. Um, and so that's why um, I like constellations more where people understand this principle because I think it's a more sustainable principle. There's a clear business model I pre-finance or in your case, I mean, you could probably also pre-finance certain events yeah, because you know, you sell mm. tickets today, you have your money, uh, he's doing Xletics, which is a, um, uh, uh, yes. um, a great uh, company. And so it's like, uh, what's a company in the US called? Yeah, spot right. So this kind of, uh, you yeah. know, you have events, yeah. you sell tickets yeah. Yeah, yeah. five, six months earlier, you yeah. need to pre-finance, and then the event comes, and you know you get the cash. Yes. Yeah, because people, yes. uh, I have paid, oh, you actually, people pay right now, uh, pay right away, right? So. Uh, they, they pay up front and oh, yeah, sorry. So bad example. So bad example. He doesn't need venture debt. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I just, while, while talking Good about model. it, I just Good got model. it. So sorry. Yeah, but it was, was a bad example. Um, so, but I, I, I wouldn't see a big difference if they have a clear case. I would actually right. consider it smart. Yeah. Uh, so, Oscar, um, I was wondering, are you willing to to tell us on on uh, what's your average share of non-performing loans? First question. Yeah. So we're a publicly traded company, and I can answer that in two ways. Um, <laughs> if you uh, both truthful, by the way. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you look at Silicon Valley Bank's loan loss ratio over the past ten years. It is 0.8%, which is un incredibly low. But that's because we lend to many mature companies, we lend to venture capital firms, very safe lending. If you look at the early stage portfolio, you're right. When there's an economic downturn, the losses, the losses can spike. And they can spike up to 7 8% of a portfolio. But that's why we, take, that's why we took warrants, because the whole idea was it's, you know, it's risky lending, even when, even when backed by top-tier VCs. It's still risky lending. Not every company is going to work out. So you may take some losses as a bank. Uh, and, but if we take warrants in all of our early stage companies, then some of the warrant gains will outweigh the losses. And over our 38 year history, uh, the warrant gains have, not a, have far outweighed the losses and have contributed to our shareholders' well being. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a lot of worries. Just tell us. Yeah. 
ask this second question. Do you keep them in, in your own book, or do you collect the rights to them and make them tradable? No, uh, we, we keep them on our own book through our holding company, etc. Uh, uh, um, I don't know if it's a matter of public record, but we hold uh, we hold thousands of warrants you know, in companies. Now these are all, and, and some of those warrants will be worth nothing, and some will be worth can be worth a significant amount of money because we're we're, we're very fortunate to bank some of the leading technology companies globally. I have one more question. Yeah, that's the last one. The last one. Oh. Yeah. But you are. Uh, Definitely a party person, you're going to be. Oh, we're going to be, oh, yeah, it's it's going to be we're going to be here all night. Yeah. 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 So, something similar, um, is VentureDebt being traded like AVS, for example? No, it, yeah, no, it, no, it's not, but interesting question, and there's potential, and then you could hang on some warrants on top of that, make it a very, very, we, we've even thought of that, but we haven't to do that. Yeah, it's probably not the time, you know, we're still too close to a financial <laughs> crisis. As a debt securities is probably. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much. I mean, like I said, uh, both will stick around for much longer time, as uh, probably or hopefully all of us are. You can ask a lot of questions to one on one and follow up, probably, I guess. Um, what I really like is uh, if you like, it's the first year that we are actually partnering with people who help us to finance this whole thing because it just has grown so much. And we were looking for partners that really bring something to the table. I mean, not just like sponsor, and we don't call it sponsors. We don't call it partner because it sounds nicer but because they really add super important, interesting information. And Silicon Valley Bank certainly does something that is for, I guess, most of us uh, a, a real solution and, and, is, and is really of great help. So thanks a lot, not only for the contribution to the cost, but to the content contribution. <laughs> yeah. And uh, looking forward to having you on board next year again. Good. And let's go, <laughs> let's go to the main hall now for the A Awards. Thanks a lot.